Hey everybody, it's me, Zach. This is Potato, <laughs> and welcome back to our channel. Hey everybody, it's me, Zach, and we are back to cover more of this, I don't know, semi-lukewarm drama related to Amberlynn Reed striking channels, trying to be relevant, trying to do whoever, whatever. We're back to talk a little bit more about that. Before we do, obviously, let me address Poe being here, not Judy. He was just already sleeping here and laying down here. I'm like, I'm not gonna... Judy's Judy's on the couch in the living room. She's also just laying. I'm filming this a little bit, little bit later today because I made the brave decision to once again give in to the non-binary urge to dye your hair and look like an elderly, slightly overweight, but yet frail lesbian. Yeah, I, <laughs> I had to do that today. And so it's later, they're both like curled up, sleeping, and so I wasn't gonna move anybody around. So please enjoy Poe. I'm sure at some point he'll start digging around in the blankets and doing whoever, whatever. Just enjoy it. Just enjoy it. And Judy will be back in the next video, I'm sure. Also, if you haven't already gone and checked out my video from yesterday, go check out the recap of the 1,000 Pound Sisters. Even if you don't watch the show, there's so many people that don't watch it that enjoy watching my recaps. So go check it out. It's a good time. I'm enjoying the season. I mean, it's only been one episode, but I'm enjoying it. So go check out my recap. Now, we have some things to go over when it comes to this, this whole mess. So really, the only channel for sure that has been struck in some kind of way by somebody, allegedly Amber Lynn Reed, is Apathetic Facts, which I covered in the video I posted on Tuesday. That was Tuesday, right? Yes, Tuesday. The only person is Apathetic Facts. Some people on my video had commented and said, hey, Orco TV, Orco TV, Orco TV, you forgot about Orco TV. I saw Orco's post about copyright strikes happening, and I did not initially interpret that to be Orko saying that their channel was struck. I guess what happened is a lot of people interpreted that as Orko saying my channel has been struck. But Orko has since put out a video. I'll link it down below because he just outlines that Amber reached out to him and tried to clear things up, whoever, whatever. I think it's helpful to know the full story and he also clarifies the miscommunication. So I'll leave that linked uh, in the description box below if you want to go check that out. And then I wanted to give some updates that Apathetic Facts posted on their community tab post. And I'll also say that a lot of you recommended to Apathetic Facts that they reach out to me to discuss things and they have reached out to me. I have talked to them a little bit and by I have talked to them. I sent them a bunch of messages but they haven't responded back. I appreciate you all sharing my information with them, my experience with them, and let me read what they had to say on their community tab post. Um, so this one was posted 23 hours ago. For context, I'm filming this at 6.30 p.m. Uh, Chicago time on <laughs> November 17th. So the, the tea might be a little cold by the time this gets posted tomorrow morning. But Apathetic Facts said, I'm really struggling with saying their name, so my apologies. I keep wanting to put S's in there that aren't there. They said, so I was struck for eight videos leading to three copyright strikes. I submitted a counter to YouTube who then reviews it before they will send it to Amber. I was rejected by YouTube four times. I submitted my info because I don't care that she knows who I am. It was rejected. Did that three more times, all rejected. Now my channel will be terminated in the next few days by YouTube. Three strikes and you're out. Yes, a lot of my videos fell under fair use, but it seems some didn't, and that is why the strikes are staying put and my channel will be gone. People telling me I'm not even trying to fight are so, so wrong. I love my channel and my subscribers, and you have no idea how hard I've been fighting behind the scenes. I got sent that like multiple times <laughs> yesterday by people. I thought about it. I knew that today I had to post the Slayton sister review so I knew I wasn't going to make a video yet today about it and I was like I kind of just want to see where things go and then this morning I woke up and I had a message from Apathetic and they were just asking me for my advice and honestly based on just this post and what I do up to this point I honestly had to be clear that I think I might 
not have any helpful information when it comes to copyright strikes <laughs> anymore. To be honest with you, this sounds different than my experience of going through the process. Back when I did it with Chantal and I don't know, that was at least two years ago. I think it was 2019. If not 2019, it was 2018, but it's been a while. And back then there was, YouTube didn't review anything. YouTube just said, here you go. This is up for y'all to figure out between one another. That, that was that. So the first step for me was giving Chantal my information, which I don't know if today if I would do the same thing, because I don't know if I, would, if I would trust Chantal with any of that. But back then I was like, who cares, whatever. And then after you gave the information, then the next step was that the other person, the person who made the strike, had to submit documentation saying that they were going to proceed with legal action to uh, sue you for whoever, whatever. <laughs> and that was the part where Chantal didn't do anything on my end, and I knew she wouldn't do anything. That's also a big part of why I gave her my information, because I was like, this girl's really not gonna pay for a lawyer to come and sue me for whoever, whatever. And then of course, I felt like I was in the right. I felt like what I was doing was fair use and was within the realm of what fair use is. So it also doesn't necessarily sound like they're getting the option or opportunity to see what that looks like. I think Chantal had like 14 days to prove that in my situation. And here it seems like they're already gonna have their stuff gone. I also was in a little bit of a different situation because I was able to go private most of my Chantal content before she was able to strike too much. So I only had two strikes on my channel as opposed to three. So I don't know if like the consequences look different once you get to three copyright strikes or not. All of that being said, it seems like they have truly exhausted all of their options or the options that are available within YouTube's messed up copyright system. I will say here, I think I alluded to this in the video I already made about this, but I do think Apathetic Facts videos are right on the edge of like what could and could not be fair use. I, I clicked on quite a few of them because I had just like never watched their channel before, particularly the ones from the live stream era are very just like whittled down versions of Amberlynn's larger live streams. There are other videos where they do a little bit more editing and, and are a bit more creative, but even even if the the whole idea, the whole the whole channel's idea is like we're editing these in funny, silly ways, even if that's the case, if you have even just one, two, three, four, five, how many? Eight videos that are like directly ripped from Amberlynn's content. I could see there being some gray area. You're like right on the edge. Cause I, I, I would say that in my opinion, there'd probably need to be a little bit more transforming happening, but I'm also not like a lawyer, an expert at copyright law or anything like that. So I, I may not know anything. And obviously I don't want people to lose their channels and things like that. I actually gave the suggestion to them um, that they should probably just like try to work something out with Amberlynn, like figure out what ones Amberlynn doesn't like and if Amberlynn's willing to like just let them take those down, that is an option in the process as well. I actually also think it's interesting, I think when you go and, in fact I know because I've, I've done this before too, I had some people who are just like straight uploading my videos and I think I had the option to either request that they take it down and if they don't take it down move on with the rest of the process or just like immediately strike them to immediately have it taken down. And I think, I think I chose to like give them the chance to just take it down before I did anything else. And I'm kind of curious why Amberlynn didn't do that. Now I assume she's probably going to talk a little bit about this in this video we're going to react to, which I guess I should have mentioned we're going to react <laughs> to the question of video. It's like 16 minutes long. If this video starts getting a little too long, I'm going to cut out all the stupid questions about, I don't know, where where's your favorite place? 
place to travel or where do you want to travel? I, I know, it's Bora Bora. We don't need to hear it 12 more times. I will say that Apathetic also posted one other update. This was only about four hours ago, um, so posted today, the day that I'm filming this, and they said to clear things up for those asking, right after I sent my counter argument with my full name, address, phone number, etc., there were accounts popping up with my family members' names, and they were saying things like, insert my name is so fat and huge, insert my name deserves this, etc., on my channel and many others. Well, I asked Amber if it was her, and she said no, she would never do that, so even with everything going on, I'm giving her the benefit of the doubt and letting you guys know that it was not her. Whoever it was quickly deleted their comments and hasn't commented since, and all parties have moved on. Which I think is good that they included that little piece of update because honestly, that was the part of their original post that was most baffling to me. It really doesn't feel like Amber Lynn behavior. I don't know, maybe that's just because I just can't imagine anybody with a platform like that going and invading other people's personal lives because I know as a, as a content creator, I don't want people going and getting into the personal lives of people around me. And I know Amber Lynn recently has been cutting back on like the people she includes in her vlogs and things like that. So I don't know, that stuff just really felt weird to me. I do now understand a little bit better why they thought it was Amberlynn because I would also be suspicious if I just gave all of my private info to a, a human and then all of a sudden all of these accounts are created, which also makes me wonder, part of Orko's video was kind of questioning whether or not it was actually like Amber Lynn was saying that the person who struck the video called themselves Amber Reed and she's Amber Lynn Reed. And so part of me is like, maybe somebody's setting this up and is like playing YouTube, playing apathetic and like, pulling the wool over everybody's eyes to make it look like it's Amber Lynn that's doing this when it's really not. All of that being said, I'm I'm curious to see what she has to say particularly about this. The video that she posted on Tuesday, was that Tuesday? Yeah, Tuesday. The video she posted on Tuesday was called something about like staying single and striking reaction channels. I don't know. So we're, <laughs> we're gonna go check that out. It's gonna be a blast. I've already talked for way too long, so let's get to Let's Get To. Hey guys, welcome to Let's Talk, episode two. Oh, did y'all see I sped her up just a little bit? <laughs> you couldn't really tell until the music came in. I was like, oh! Oh shit, it hits a little different when it's sped up. <laughs> okay, so just to get this like out in the open, my skin is not doing very good right now. As you guys can tell, it's super red. If you guys could feel it, it's super dry. There are moments where it itches really bad. It's mainly all right here. I didn't even want to film this video because seeing myself in the camera is kind of hard for me because I don't really have skin problems. So when it does happen, I just am very self-conscious about I, it. But we're just gonna embrace it for now. And I just hope that it gets better soon. I really miss wearing makeup because that's when I feel my best is when I have makeup on. Okay, so I really don't mean this in a mean way. I promise, but like she really doesn't look any different than she normally does to me personally. I mean, maybe now that she points it out, I can maybe see a little bit of like splotchiness, splotchiness on her cheek. But I feel like if she hadn't said anything, I would have just minded my business and kept it moving. I know, well, you know what? I had to keep in mind who her audience is and I'm sure some, I'm sure one of y'all would have been in her comments talking about it. But I, I feel like I also would have just not really thought anything about it. I really probably wouldn't have. So every Monday night, I have you guys ask me anything you want on my community post, and then I'll talk about it here. Okay, so the first one I'm going to read is kind of lengthy, so I'm just going to, like, summarize it the best I can. Okay. You said the reason for not talking about what happens in your life is because you're afraid people might hurt those around you. That's fair, but there are ways you could do it without identifying those people. You can tell us what happened. You can tell us how you met the new people in your life. You don't have to mention their names or their location. You've started these stories, so it is only fair that you finish them. I completely get what you're saying. I'm sure it's very frustrating that there are things that I've mentioned that I uh -huh. Uh -huh. talking about or I don't explain why my last breakup happened or anything like that. Right. I totally get the Okay. There were so many questions on that post asking about what happened with wifey. Like, if you really broke up, like, why can't you just tell me about it? Like, if to just let us know what happened. There were so many wifey questions. But unfortunately, some stories are started 
that don't get to be finished or the ending doesn't get to uh, be shared and that's just kind of reality. Uh, feel... That's like the series looking on HBO. I mean, they did try to wrap it up with a movie. They put out a movie, but it's like, that's what that made me think of. Like how many, how many TV shows have I watched that got canceled after two seasons and I didn't get to find out what happened? Always have the people in my life come first and always respect their wishes if they don't want to be on camera. And I must Fair. definitely respect their wishes if they no longer want to be mentioned on YouTube at all. Sure. Like, I try my hardest to share things that are going on in my life without giving too many details away. I'm just having a hard time right now, currently, balancing them. I think the challenging thing, though, is that the wifey thing in particular, this changed behavior about who is and isn't included on YouTube happened after Wifey got like essentially doxxed by Amberlynn because Amberlynn didn't put a lot of care into who she put on her channel, called up Becky out of nowhere, cold called Becky, and then Becky made a mistake that led to Wifey getting doxxed. It's, you know, it's just those things that like, because that happened with Wifey, now we can't know anything more about Wifey or anybody else in her life. Like, that's the difficult part, because that was the story that got started, and that's also the story that's the reason that she's not talking about anybody. I literally went from oversharing and telling you guys absolutely everything uh -huh. to, like, not telling you guys anything at right. all. So now I'm trying to meet in the middle and trying to figure out how to manage personal life. Correct. Life. Just There's, be patient with me because I will figure it out. There is a balance, but I also do think it's interesting that you want a separation of YouTube life and personal life when your YouTube life, your li your your channel is about your life. Because, you know, we've been through many iterations of what Amberlynn has and has not referred to her channel as. It's usually a conversation about whether or not her channel is a weight loss channel or not. And for a long time, she was like, this channel was never a weight loss channel. It's a channel about me. It's about my life. And all of that's fine. All of that's fine. But like, specifically, if your channel is about you, then like, I don't know how you separate. I mean, surely there are some things, obviously, that you're going to choose to keep offline. But at this point, you're keeping almost everything offline. I mean, I've talked about this at length. That's why I think your channel's getting boring is because none of the actual authentic things you're participating in are being shown on your channel. So you're just filling it with all this fluff that's not really telling us anything about your life. And thus people are like, I'm bored. I, you're, you're not showing anything new. And it's also different because I've had people, I've, I know I've talked personally about like, oh, there's things in my personal life that I'm not gonna share with my channel, but I'm not out here being a, a, a vlogger. <laughs> I'm not a vlogger. I'm not vlogging my life around me. So when you don't see Noel in a video, when you don't see my besties in a video, <laughs> it's because I'm not vlogging my life. That's not, that's not the basis of what my channel is. I think it's easier for me to say I'm going to separate my YouTube life from my personal life, but you've made your personal life your YouTube life. So I do think you need to find something in the middle. I talked way too long about that. <laughs> no hate, just genuinely curious. It seems like you never take serious breaks in between relationships. Why do you think this is? True. Or do you think it's a positive or negative thing about you? Oh, or when you walk Twinkie, what's your favorite part? Have you seen things you didn't before, like pretty flowers or interesting people? Anything strange? So I'm gonna answer the Twinkie question first. No, of course you're gonna answer the question nobody cares about first, of course. I haven't really seen anything I haven't seen before, nothing strange or interesting to share, but by far my favorite part of walking Twinkie is just purely the enjoyment she has being outside walking. She's just super cute and like every time she stops to sniff something or like if she sees another dog, she'll think that she needs to protect me. She'll, she'll do cute little barks. She thinks she's big and bad, but she's all talk and no bite. So you're right. It seems like I never take long breaks in between relationships. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you for getting to that part because I don't need to hear... You talk, again, we're talking about like the most mundane thing, like walking your dog, which I love walking my dogs too, but nobody nobody wanted to know about walking your dog like that. And you've you started showing you walking Twinkie in your vlogs. We got it, good. I'm glad, I'm glad she's getting walked. <laughs> Why people would think that was a negative thing, 
but it doesn't always have to be negative. I thoroughly just love love. I love being in a relationship with someone. I love the affection, the companionship, mm -hmm. just the way that it feels. Like the stages of yeah. love, like right. true love is so beautiful and so fun. And like getting to know someone on that level. I do enjoy being single, but I also enjoy being in a relationship. Okay, first of all, you can't say you enjoy being single because how long have you been single in the past six years, eight years, however long you've been on YouTube? How do you even know what it feels like to be single? <laughs> You've not been single in so long. And also, I just want to say the way you describe that is that you loved being in a relationship. You loved love. You like the concept of love. You like the concept of a relationship. It, wh when was the you, for the past four years you didn't even enjoy the relationship you were in? So what do you <laughs> like these things? I don't get it! Every relationship that I've gotten in, I have never searched for it. Somehow it just kind of found me. I never purposely jump into things quickly. I always just go with the flow. And if it is what it is, it is what it is, if that makes sense. I truly don't believe in like relationship timelines. Like if you want to get married to someone a week after meeting them, go for it. And I don't believe that people should be looked down upon for wanting to spend their life with someone else. I personally prefer sharing my life. I love being a part of someone else's life and also creating our own life. Well, so well, right. A comment. Yeah, uh, for sure. First of all, I don't want to be alone. I, listen, Noel's my very first serious relationship. I've only been dating Noel for four years. Prior to that, I didn't feel like I was alone in my life. I had other people. I had friends. I had people that were there experiencing life with me. Like, this concept that the only way you can get that is from being in a relationship is wild to me. Like, I, this is why I think people are questioning you jumping into all these relationships so quickly is because you just you just like the concept of having somebody there. I'm not convinced you even like actually know what it means to enjoy being in a romantic relationship. Like I don't know that you can actually have the appreciation for what it means to like really love somebody just based on the way you're talking. I mean, maybe you really have experienced true real life love and I hope you have because I, I think it is a great thing to experience. I think everybody should have people in their lives who they love. But like the way you talk about it, you, <laughs> you talk about it like somebody who's never actually experienced genuine like romantic connection, relationship, whoever, whatever. And I don't know, maybe that's just me reflecting back on like the things that you've said about your, the past like four years of your life with Becky. But, but it just sounds like so bizarre. Underneath that comment. And they said she can't be alone emotionally or physically because she can't truly take care of herself. So she latches on to whoever gives her attention. Completely false. I can take care of myself emotionally and physically. The person I'm in a relationship with currently does not take care of me at all. I take care of myself. And then below that, someone said her girlfriends are just caretakers. She can't take care of herself. If it weren't for food delivery services, she wouldn't even be able to get groceries. I honestly, I, I can't, I cannot figure out why people think that my girlfriends are caretakers. I get it. 2019, Amber Lynn, she was cray cray. She looked like she needed a caretaker. She didn't have one, but she looked like she needed one. But this 2021 Amber Lynn going into 2022 Amber Lynn, I don't know. Like, do you guys still just like picture me as that girl in the past? I don't know. Like, yeah. I'm a literal 30 year old woman. Okay, well, first of all, your your act has only changed in like the past couple months. So let's not, <laughs> let's not act like you've been acting like this for the entirety of 2021 because you have it. But two... I don't know, maybe people think that you might need help with stuff because one, Becky has told us you needed help with stuff, and two, you don't have a car! You don't have a car, so the, the person who said that if you didn't have a girlfriend to take you places or food delivery services to bring you groceries and food, that's based on fact you don't have a car! Where are you walking? Where are you walking? You're not. I, th in all seriousness, what are you, you're walking, you're walking to a grocery store, getting groceries and bringing them back? I don't think so. And you don't know how to drive and you don't have a car. So yeah, I think, I think people have pieced together like, what would Amber Lynn do if she didn't? Now, I, do I think, I mean, you just talked about like taking showers and things like that. Like, 
I, I think that you, there is a lot of stuff that you could probably do that people don't give you credit for. I'm not talking about those things. I'm talking about Becky said that she's done things to help you. And two, and two, you don't have a car, which is probably more important because, I mean, you could probably write off some of the stuff with Becky because you were sick and you did experience a hysterectomy and things like that where you probably did need some additional help being cared for. So, like, let's forget about the Becky stuff. You don't have a car. Why can you show us slicing scallions and making overcooked bacon and eggs, but not your lovely and complex meals that are seared and seasoned beautifully? Seems like something your viewers would really enjoy watching. I have honestly been trying to show more of me cooking. I am going to 100% admit right now that I dislike cooking. I'm trying to find like a joy and love for it. But it's like, I know, look how cute she is, oh my God. But it's like, I know if I wanna succeed in this weight loss, I need to get a little bit more creative instead of just typical broccoli and chicken. So on top of me disliking cooking, cooking for me is kind of like a chore. I'm trying to like not make it a chore, but since it feels like a chore, it's like vlogging it is the last thing I can think of, but I'm trying my hardest to start bringing you guys more in the kitchen and watching me cook and stuff like that because it seems like you guys really do enjoy that, okay? Okay, we, <laughs> listen, I like to see what you're cooking. We know that. But I just, this brings me back to like, you get to pick what kind of content you like. If you don't like cooking and it's already a chore to cook, why are you showing us cooking? Why are you, uh, like, why? Why? And people only want, I think she missed the point of that question, truly, or she's being daft or just like purposely ignorant. But like the point of that question was people want to know who's cooking you the food. And people are, the person was implying that you're not cooking the food, Amberlynn, in case you missed what they were wondering. Okay, so next one is, I want you to talk about reaction channels. Why did you copyright strike apathetic faxes reactions, even though you claimed to okay, not yes. who they were when yes. you were on live stream? This is the tea I want to hear. This is the tea I want to hear and claim to not watch reaction channels or compilation channels. Yes, yes, because she says that all the time, but then she's in, uh, somebody reminded me of the comments that she visited my friend Justine, Justine Cake and Geese. She's out here telling Alex is shook, she loves her. There's some, I think Sinatra says, I think she's, I think people said that she was in that stream, like, mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. You do know what fair use is, right? You're supposed to be a content creator, so I would hope you understand the fair use laws and why it's laughable that you strike these channels. Not to mention, they're your bread and butter and keep you relevant. I'm not going to sit here and argue with you about who keeps who relevant because oh. it's just pointless and it's not productive in this conversation. Okay. I have Agreed. never did a copyright strike on anybody until a few days ago. I oh, have back oh! she's getting ready to say that she's never done it but okay she's 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 admitting it she's admitting it okay i want to hear what you got to say then back and forth between watching reaction channels and not watching reaction channels for the last like few years and i'm currently in a cycle where i have a few that i watch <coughs> and i actually kind of enjoy them so people saw that i've been watching alex ashok because i do enjoy him and someone happened to message me on instagram and told me hey someone is uploading your videos your full videos onto their channel here, take a look. They sent me a link and here pops up Apathetic Facts. Uh -huh. I love me a good compilation, so I was ready to watch them. I do not mind a reaction. I do not mind a compilation. Well, yeah, let's also be clear, because actually I think that could have been, that might have been the, the comment that I read in my video, but let's be clear. I don't consider Apathetic Facts a reaction channel. A reaction is like what I'm doing here. I'm watching it for the first time with you all. I know some people don't watch it for the first time with everybody. Sometimes they've like gone back and edited it and whoever, whatever, but we're watching it together. You're seeing my reaction. That's not, that's not what Apathetic Facts is. Like, it just isn't. <laughs> and there are compilation channels. I would say that's more so what that person is. I actually enjoy compilations of me, but every single video I clicked on from Apathetic Facts was a video of mine yeah. that was not even edited. There might've been a little bubble right. of a word that wasn't in my video. Right. Or there might've been like a beep every time I yeah. said a moment. Y'all, I don't, I, listen, I don't, I don't wanna super hard agree with Amber Lynn here because I do think it's like a slippery slope. I think it's maybe probably not a great look for her, honestly. And nobody ever comes out on top when they're out here striking channels, okay? But she's not wrong, at least from, I clicked on several videos, okay? Clicked on several, which by the way, I think Apathetic Facts has taken down almost all of their videos. There's only like two left on their channel. But like very, very, very 
very much so. <laughs> like, very limited editing on a good chunk of the ones I clicked on. But it was my literal full video being uploaded onto their channel, and I was like, wait a minute, is this fair use? I honestly didn't know what to do about it, so I myself contacted YouTube. I will never copyright a reaction channel. Uh -huh. I will never, ever strike down a compilation of me because I don't care. But uh -huh. what is not okay is taking my full video and uploading it onto your channel and profiting yeah. off of it. That's, no, that's not under fair use. And I'm, I'm curious where she's getting these personal contacts to YouTube. Anytime I have an issue on YouTube, I can barely find anybody. So I'm glad she has somebody. <laughs> I'm glad she, I'm glad she has somebody. I kind of felt that in my heart. So that's why I contacted YouTube. I wanted to understand it a bit more. I sent them my channel. I sent them Apathetic Facts' channel. And unfortunately with YouTube, they literally cannot do anything about it because they need the creator, the copyright owner, uh -huh. to file the strike. So I'm over right. like, do I really want to do this to this person? And I did think about it for a solid 24 hours. I slept on it. I went back and forth. I talked to friends. I needed advice. I didn't know what to do because I constantly said I will never strike a channel. Right. But then when I heard everyone else's like opinions on the matter, they said this isn't right because they literally are stealing your content. And on top of people's advice, on top of my gut feeling, and on top of YouTube telling me they are stealing your work, I realized, all right, time to put my big girl panties on. So yes. I mean, based on, uh, listen, I don't know if she's really talking to somebody at YouTube or not. <laughs> Truly, I don't, I don't know if that's a thing that they have for people or not. It seems like based on what Apathetic posted that she, she could be right. It seems like YouTube looks at it as content stealing based on that. I did strike some videos. I did. And I don't feel bad at all because they were literally stealing my content. So Apathetic Facts ended up emailing me. I will not share messages, that is not okay. So we have been corresponding back and forth literally okay. all day today. We are trying to find some type of compromise and I gotta be honest, yes. I literally can't find one. I let them know that they can continue making compilations of me. I really don't care well, right. to go at it. That's well then, then, the, then I don't get it. The compromise should be, like I said at the beginning of this video, I would think that the compromise should be just let Apathetic take down the videos that you don't like, which are the ones that you feel like are just re-uploading your content and let them upload compilations. Let them do that. Yeah, that's the compromise. What do you mean you can't find one? I just figured it out for you. That is not the issue. I think people are getting super confused between the true fair use and what y'all want the fair use to really mean. Fair. The whole strike, copyright, YouTube, reaction situation is very messy, but there is a That was a line. weird cut. all these years, this is the first time that I have ever strike down some videos. It's, I literally have physical it's true. Because here on YouTube, in the YouTube studio, you can see any single video that you have striked. It, it is true. She's never, she, she's never been the one that's had the issue. It's always been Chantal. <laughs> that's how you're striking people. Amber Lynn has, has always stayed away from that drama. And you cannot like edit it or anything like that. So if there's other reaction channels saying that I've done this to them, they're lying and you need to figure that out. Okay, so before I move on to the next comment, I just wanna say like, I'm sorry, I feel like this let's talk has gotten a little heated because low key feel kind of attacked. I don't wanna be like victim, but it's like, I'm going through these comments and it's like, wifey, reaction channel strikes, wifey, <laughs> reaction channel strikes. I'm just like, ugh, there's more to my channel and more to me than all of that. And it's what would you like them to ask you about? Your coffee canisters? Your Legos? Girl, we're telling you that shit's boring. We don't care. What? There's more to your channel? Is there? Is there more? <laughs> Is there really? Kind of just like a little bit overwhelming, to be honest. So let's just keep going, okay? Okay, so next question. Hi, Amberlynn. Could you do a cooking demonstration of that pork chop with the mango salsa? It looked very tasty. I've watched you for years, and it didn't look like any of your signature dishes. True. It's as if someone True. else. True. Yes, I would definitely make that in a vlog for you guys. Let's I've see it. I've been really trying to step out of my comfort zone when it comes to cooking. Let's I see it. I've been live streams for literally six months, half a year. So you guys haven't seen the steps I've been taking when it comes to stuff like right. that. Because right, right. Because I've been cooking or at least trying to. But yes, I will definitely make the mango salsa. I did see some people speculating that it might be like some kind of meal kit or something or another. But it does make sense that she's potentially been doing all this stuff off offline because we've literally only seen her doing live streams which spoiler alert was something that i was saying the whole time like we're missing out on all of this stuff happening in your life like we're gonna have a lot of questions so for you guys because a lot of you have asked about it okay so the next one and the last one how do you feel about polyamorous relationships now oh 
can do what they want. Oh, okay. This is this is indirectly a question about wifey. People are trying to get the wifey tea without saying wifey. But if you don't remember, famously, wifey was polyamorous, okay? And that was the one thing that Amber Lynn stated out loud that she was unsure about her relationship with wifey. I firmly believe that. Like, I am not going to knock anyone. Love me a sister wives moment. Love me a moment where like two girlfriends are sharing two boyfriends. Like I love that for them, but it's not. It's not me. It's not me. Like, it's what? Like, <laughs> sister wives and two girlfriends sharing two boyfriends. What weird examples of polyamory? <laughs> you want to have like six girlfriends or like two boyfriends or like? And she doesn't yeah. even know what polyamory I just, I is. I don't want to do that. I will never do that. And it's just not for me. I am a monogamous person in the way that I think. If you're okay, but you can be monogamous in a polyamorous relationship. Like, polyamory doesn't equal open relationship. You're just effing whoever you want. You know what I'm saying? Like, there are monogamous polyamorous couples. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, cup, like, and by couple, I mean thruple, quadruple, whoever, whatever. There are people that only date within their polyamorous relationship, you know? Does that make sense? Relationship and you're in love with someone and you have like great sex, you have like true love, you have passion and chemistry, you have fun together. And you just overall vibe so well that you know that you want them to be like your future wife or husband. It's like, why would you want to get in a relationship where you're kind of like accepting less than that? I mean, unless you want to be married now, to I, multiple people, that's you, totally up to you, but like you, I see that mm, as, okay. She doesn't know what polyamory is. <laughs> She has no idea what polyamory is. Hi, I am absolutely in love with you. I want to marry you. You literally mean the world to me. I wake up every day and I think of you. We laugh together. We cry together. Because what is this editing? So you. What is this? What coats my heart. This editing. You me in ways that I just didn't even know was possible. Like, I am thoroughly in love I with don't... you. Why would I... What was she trying to do with that editing? I want that. And then go find something less than that. That's... It... It doesn't make sense. For me, it doesn't make sense. And I most definitely do not want to be sharing the person I'm in love with. And that's just my opinion. So Okay, yeah, you don't... It, polyamory doesn't have to be right for you. That's fine. It's not for everyone. It's not for me. I'm not in a polyamorous relationship. But I don't think you understand what polyamory is. I think you think polyamory is like some open relationship, situationship type of deal. I, I don't think you're very clear on what it is. Wifey didn't teach you a whole lot. Oh, I do want to apologize to those who've watched this the full way that it was kind of like, I feel like this one was very like drama filled and that's not my intention with these Let's Talk videos at all. I'm hoping next Let's Talk can be a little more like, hi, so I really love drinking water. This is my wallet. Don't forget to take vitamins. How many pets do you have? <sighs> Don't, no. <sighs> this was more interesting than any, any Let's Talk live stream you've done in a long time. No, I don't want to talk about the vitamins you take. I, that's a hard pass for me, Amberlynn. Just doing my makeup. So now I'm gonna put these on and I'm gonna go edit this video. I hope that you guys did enjoy this and I'll see you in my next one. Bye. Okay, in all honesty, <laughs> as the video is finishing up, my camera overheated and turned off. So I think you only probably missed like, I don't know, the last 30 seconds at most of the video. Nothing super interesting. So anyways, I think that's all interesting that she all of a sudden now has decided that she's going to start striking channels. It sounds like she put a lot of thought into it. I know that that's still not going to sit well with a lot of people. A lot of people loved going and watching Apathetic Facts channel and love to watch that instead of her channel. And I think that's probably why Amber Lynn is upset. And whether you like Amber Lynn or not, I'm not entirely sure that I think that she's not got a case. Um, and like I said, I think Apathetic's best, best avenue for moving forward is to probably just try and figure out how can I still have a channel? How can I still do like fun, silly compilations and also like keep my channel and keep Amberlynn happy. I don't know. I know some people are probably going to disagree with me about that, but that's just, that's just my thoughts and opinions. I still think it, I do want to be clear. I do think it's a bad look for Amberlynn to be striking anybody. Uh, it's like literally almost never gone over well in the history of channels I've watched doing striking. <laughs> just, just my honest personal opinion. But I don't know. You let me know what you think down in the comments below. I know you will. I know you will. And anyways, that's 
that's all I have for today. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did and it's your first time here on my channel, make sure to subscribe down below and hit the bell button so you get notifications every single time I post a new video. Follow me on all my social media, leave a comment, hit like, click share, and have a great day. Bye!